this initiative was set up to bridge the gap of knowledge uh, among students, but also lecturers, uh, on how to apply the traditional source criticism, which is a current method in history, to digitized and digital born sources that are published online. In Ranka 2, we've focused very much on creating manageable small bits with no account, with no download, which are just there open in French, English and German, so that both lecturers and students can just cherry pick what is interesting, applicable. They can also tweak it to their own interest and integrate it into an ordinary lesson. It consists of different lessons and each lesson starts with an animation the same animation is put in a quiz mode and it only takes 25 minutes to do both and then there is a whole series of assignments that vary from hardcore digital humanities to just content related traditional interpretation methodology um, what else do we have theory uh, comparisons our common interest is publicity uh, to integrate technology into the scholarly workflow. And Claren has supported us various times. We have organized workshops at several venues to create an audience um, and a kind of user studies for the transcription chain that has been developed. And of course, there are plenty of uh, proprietary initiatives to in, uh, to support transcription, but it's very important that in the realm of research there is open source material, and um, the the transcription chain creates unique possibilities to support this troublesome process of transcription, not only for scholars, but there is an incredible potential for archivists and librarians who curate collections that are just hidden in the archive because they can't hire someone to just listen and write down what is in the archive. So with the transcription chain, of course there will be all kinds of difficulties and obstacles. This creates unique opportunities to open up these archives. And this means that Clarin has an added value not only for the scholarly community, but for the cultural heritage community at large. And we intend to explore both trajectories. And so this is how Claren can help with supporting not only transcriptions, but also the other elements of technology that play a role with interview data, which is annotation, analysis, and uh, emotion recognition. So we are trying to see whether the data is interoperable, can interview data on migration or refugees or uh, people who, who are jobless, can this interview data be useful and use the narratives for text mining, for emotion recognition, to help train software to improve the recognition of emotions? So there is a kind of, the, for everything there's something in it, and that's the secret of our relative success. would be very useful is um, small testimonials of use cases in which uh, completely people who are new to the use of Claren tools give a kind of testimony. I, I knew nothing about Claren and I didn't know how I could use language resources. I'm a historian. I study the history of medicine. But now that someone has shown me how this Clement tool or how this resource can help me with um, extracting new meaning from my data, I'm, I'm hooked on Claren. I, I want to keep on. So if you have little use cases, very low threshold of people from outside 
who have benefited from it, then you can you can create a chain. Uh, because in a leaflet in which you explain what Clarence stands for, the abbreviative, reading the leaflet and reading what it, for someone who's not accustomed to that kind of, is already a, a lot of new knowledge. So you have to go through the meaning of the institutional existence of the goals before you get to the nitty-gritty, which is what's in it for me. So I would start with what's in it for me. And, and this kind of type of communication could be helpful.